of success to motivate others to take ownership of the world around them while striving to be the, the best that they can possibly be. Oh my goodness, don't I say that every week? All right, she is the author of Unstoppable, Igniting the Power Within to Achieve Your Greatest Potential. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the fabulous MC Light. Oh, what an introduction, thank you. <laughs> Hello there, how are you today? doing well just moving around this city i'm actually on my way to a bet taping right now awesome but uh you know i i just uh just gotta keep it moving in this city definitely definitely well we definitely thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to come on and be a part of dworks live say hello to dj d mix good morning hi how are you how are you <laughs> I'm doing fine, and uh, don't pay me no mind. When I say good morning, it just means good day to you. It's the first time we're speaking. All, All right. right. That's I great. I like that. All <laughs> right. I love it. I love it. Well, um, we had asked some of our listeners to uh, post in questions, but I also have some questions, and I was just telling you I'm really excited because I got your book today, but we're going to talk about that in a minute. But okay. a lot of people want to know, like, what is life like for you after your rap career, after setting the stage for so many female hip-hop artists that's in the game today? What is life like for you after your rap career? Well, you know what's crazy is I don't really consider my rap career to be done. It's just taking on another life. Okay. And so I'm every weekend I'm actually performing somewhere. So whether it's a performance with me rapping or me DJing or speaking or lecturing, it still feels like an extension of what I've always done. Okay. So um, it just feels like I'm, I'm out in the world and able to really do all of the things that I love to do. Oh, so I don't, I, don't think, I don't look at it as an after. I look mm. at it as, you know, sort of an addendum to what I've grown up doing. Awesome, awesome. Now, another question that we have, how important is it? You, you've seen this game change over the years from when you started, and um, a lot has changed. But one of the things that we, we saw, you kind of set the stage for when you were rapping, and I guess you could have done it back then, was the way that people dress and how they market themselves as artists. Um, how, how important is it for new artists definitely now to take control of their own careers and to ensure that they stay relevant in a changing music industry? Oh, well, it's extremely important. And I think from the onslaught of it, it's them actually, you know, understanding that hip hop is the catalyst to, to so much more. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's very important when mapping it out that your dreams don't just stop at achieving uh, being an artist. Ooh, come or, on. Like it has to be bigger and better because mm -hmm. if you only see it to that level, that's all it will be. And once you get up to a certain level, if you don't go higher, you're going to come down. Oh, yes. So you, you have to make, you, know, you have to broaden the vision. It's mm -hmm. like, what do you intend to do when all of those eyes and ears are on you? Mm -hmm. Are you prepared for whatever that next level may be? Mm -hmm. And I think always in the beginning of time for me, it was about inspiring people. And so because that was the main focus, I can dive into anything as long as it takes care of that huge goal, which is to inspire someone. Right. Oh, yes, definitely. I, I truly believe in that. And that's what I live my life trying to inspire others. It's so interesting because I did get an opportunity, even though I just got to the book today, kind of going through. And I don't want to, I'm just, like I said, I'm so excited about the book. And we're going to talk about that. But before I talk about that, um, we actually, I, I'm on an app called Clip. And I have like so many followers on this app. And when I told them that I was doing this interview, I gave them the opportunity to submit questions. And I said I was going to select two people that could ask their question. So DJ Demix has one of the questions from one of our fans uh, on Clip. Okay, her name is, okay. A, uh, her name is a sense of awe. And her question is, how do you feel the industry has evolved for women rappers? There still seems to be barriers. And her question is, why? 
Well, uh, truthfully speaking, there are barriers for men, too. I mean, if you can imagine how tight it is for us to get in, and there aren't so many on the front line, how, you know, how much of a challenge it is for a man to be heard when there's so many of them Mm -hmm. in the industry. However, I do think that um, the balance needs to be created, but it has to be prompted by us, the hip hop community. We have to say that it's something we want. And more, more times than not, in trying to get that message across, we have to kindly decline and deny that type of music that doesn't enhance us or speak to us or touch our souls or our spirits. We have to say no to it. Mm-hmm. So that means turning your radio station uh, when you hear something that you are not down with. Oh it means God. turning off the video at the point in which that imagery doesn't coincide with what it is that you believe in. So when we start to send a message that what they're promoting and pushing isn't good enough, they start to look for something else because uh, the bottom line is money. What translates into money for these machines? So just as much as we say we want something else, we have to deny what's being out there. Mm-hmm. And, and so that sends the message that needs to be seen by the powers that be that actually spend the money that um, I think a lot of people don't understand what a business, the music business is. Mm-hmm. And that is record labels have shareholders. Come on now. And so when they put all their money in and they say, so and thing this quarter of the year, mm-hmm. the last quarter of the year, we need, this is how much money we're looking to raise. Those shareholders put their money in and they damn well expect to see some money back. Oh, yeah. So I don't think it's. Yeah, I don't think it's so much, um, you know, a ploy to not have women included, but when women were included in a huge way, we didn't sell the types of records that they expected us to sell Mm. that really, you know, justified the amount of money that they put into female artists. We take so much more money than the guys because we got to have the glam squad. Right. The makeup, the hair, the Mm -hmm. styling, you know, and, uh, you know, shoot after shoot, appearance after appearance. You're talking somewhere in the realm of $5,000, $10,000 a pop just to look right when you hit the stage. Right. So there's so many things, so many variables that come into play, and I could probably go on and on, but I don't want to take up all that time. Right. But I hope I did answer the question. Let's just get out there and root for the people we really believe in. Push and promote that unknown artist yeah. that you may know of in your neighborhood so uh- that that name begins to resonate and mean something to other people. Oh my gosh, you said a mouthful right there uh, when you said push, you know, that unknown artist because so many times, you know, people don't want to support an unknown artist and what they forget about is that everybody who's famous now, everybody who's popular and mainstream was unknown before we knew who they were and we started buying their albums or watching them on video and TV. So yeah. Uh That's important. And, and, and just uh, piggybacking on what you just said, um, what do you think about uh, the opportunities for indie artists? And what would you say to that indie artist that's out here right now that's trying to push their music, that's trying to do their career doing what they love? What would you say to them to encourage them or to inspire them to keep going or whatever, even when they feel like they're not getting oh, anywhere? Goodness. Yeah, I would say, you know what? Keep Pushing. This is the time for the indie artists. Mm-hmm. There is no doubt about it. If there were ever a time for them to have a platform to be seen and recognized and then appreciated, it would be now. Right. So I would say don't give up. Mm-hmm. You know, in the face of all adversity, um, people have come up out of the mud, uh, out of the muddy water and proven that they there was a reason for them wanting to be involved in this music industry in the first place. So I would say never give up on your dream. Definitely. And you talk about that in your book. Let's go into the book, Unstoppable, Igniting the Power Within to Achieve Your Greatest Potential. Now, I have to tell you, when I I, kind of looked at it a little bit, all I know is when I saw that you had a book, I just ordered it. I didn't care. I didn't try to get the... the, um, 
the promo copy, the press copy. People, I ordered my book. I, I paid for you. it. Okay, so you know what that means? Go online and order your copy of this book. So I thought it was a I novel at first. You. I really did. I thought, it was, but when I got it today and I saw it, I was like, "Oh my gosh, this is great!" And and I started reading uh, some of the things in here. But what inspired you to first even want to put all of this inspiration and all of these things to paper? Well, I needed to get it to the people that need it most, mm -hmm. and I, for some reason, I felt as though to put uh, such logical. Because right now we're in a space in time where, you know, most lyrics, and I'm not going to say all, let's mm -hmm. say maybe 80%, really don't make sense. You know, they're <laughs> fragmented thoughts that they put together that kind of bounce over a beat and feel good. Mm -hmm. However, when I, I don't, I no longer think MCs are trying, let me not say MCs, rappers. Right. Rappers are not necessarily trying to teach the youth. Mm. Whereas MC, that that is the job of an MC is to teach right. when they preach mm. and when they rhyme, and so they can think of very, um, you know, like they can think of very skillful ways to present it. But at the end of the day, the MC teaches. Mm -hmm. So I felt like this wasn't a, a moment in time for me to be able to compete with what's happening out there. Right. So I said, let me just put it in a book and hope that those who need it will gravitate towards it. Mm -hmm. And those who think, you know, uh, they want it will find something out of it that can be of some substance and some positivity. And so I just said, let me, it, it was very simple for me when I hear from people all the time, what is, um, how, how are you still here? What is, how do you make it happen? You know, mm -hmm. this is constantly the questions that I'm being asked so I say you know what there are some precepts that I live my my life by right and how about I just share those so that right. for those who feel as though it's a mystery it's really not mm -hmm. it's very systematic and so all of those things can be found in that book right and one of them one of them uh, that I read, and I'm just going to um, read this particular one because I just want people to know some of the type of things that are in this book and why they need to pick up their copy of, their, of this book. And you, this one I really, really love, and it says, Like attracts like. There is no guarantee that if you are nice, everyone will like you. And I'm telling this to my junior clippers, these people that talk about bullying bullying and everything you can bend over backwards uh -huh. to be cordial and you still stand the chance of not being accepted if you believe you've got something special to offer why spend valuable time trying to convince others if you are not appreciated move on and find someone who finds you worth discovering amen give good energy like attracts like with a positive attitude you will draw others that are just as positive oh i love that Ooh, thank you. You spoke volumes right thank then. I think you wrote that thank to you me. Very much. I actually got chills when you read it. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I think I think you were writing D. Like attracts like. I really believe that's what you were no, saying. I, you didn't I, know I, it. That's because <laughs> that was it. I, and I, I try to live my life like that. Like I don't have time. My life is too short to worry about what somebody else is thinking about me. And if they don't accept me, guess what? I'm going to keep it moving, baby. Keep it moving. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Did Only mix way you, to do it. You have Only. another question uh, ready? Um, okay. Um, now, another thing, um, tell people real quick where they can get your book. And if you uh, want, go ahead and tell a little bit about your uh, sister's network. Okay, absolutely. They can get the book at mclightnow.com. If you order it that way, you get an autograph, you know, a special autograph copy. Like if I not, you can always go, yeah, you can always go on Amazon. Some people feel more comfortable that way. I don't know why. It's right. Me. You're, you're getting it from me. But however it goes, that's where you can find it, mclightnow.com. Mm -hmm. And Hip Hop Sisters is an organization that was founded about five or six years ago, the artistry side of it. Um, and now, just this year in April, we have uh, launched the foundation, which I am extremely excited about. It's about redefining the essence of young women and young girls through hip hop and unity. So we're looking to help them find a way to define themselves and not be so easily defined 
by the lyrics in these hip hop records today because that that's not who they are, mm -hmm. nor is it who they should look to become or to be. Mm -hmm. And so um, it seems as though um, a lot of rappers find it um, find it entertainment to degrade and and belittle our young sisters mm. and it's time that they know that they are the queens and that um, they need to be that and yeah. become that. Yes, definitely. Okay, one more question, d -Mix. Okay, this question is from Jen Rogers and she wants to know how you chose the name MC Light. Well, Light was everything positive and, uh, you know, I was going through the dictionary of thought, which is a... Um, and it's a dictionary that has a lot of philosophers giving their interpretations of words. And so light was one of the words that was positive. It was one of the first uh, things created by God. It is the, the truth is the light. The light uh, leads you out of darkness. Uh, where light exists, no darkness can be. Ooh, come so on now. Because of all of those, yeah, because of all of that positivity, I wanted some of it. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I took it on positivity. I wanted some of it. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I took it on and I changed the spelling. Mm -hmm. And now it's all about me living my life up uh -huh. to actually being light. All right. Okay. That that's I'm ooh, you said a mouthful. I feel like I just went to church in two seconds. <laughs> well, you know what? Un unbeknownst to me, I named myself Light so that I could meet up to the challenge. All and right. So that's where I am right now. That is awesome. Well, I want you to know that you still have a multitude, and I mean a multitude of fans and even some young people because I have a lot of what I call junior clippers. And a, a few of them were like, I know who that is. Well, some even went and Googled you after I said, go look it up if you don't know. <laughs> so uh, now they're fans. So we definitely want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule and um, being you. a part of D-Works Live. Um, this is MC Light, and right now you're checking out D-Works Live. Keep it locked.